How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week nine, we're on a bye, and we've got only a few points to put into recruiting. And as we come into this, I'd like to remind everybody that if you enjoy the content, please feel free to subscribe. Always helps a ton. Thank you for everybody that already has. The support has been awesome. Uh, this recruiting on this buy, I'm kind of curious. We have gained with uh, a lot of players this this past week, so it doesn't feel right. Like it doesn't. It, for some reason, it doesn't seem like we should be uh, gaining as much as we have in this week. Um, but I'm gonna complain too much. We'll go ahead and throw some points around Tim Poland. Not looking too good on the recruiting front. It seems like. We're not going to be able to pick him up. Duke has their visit before us. They have a decent lead on us as well. And he's 77% locked. I'm going to say that we might need to cut our losses here, especially for a 60 overall tackle. Across the board, I've gone ahead and looked, and we're looking pretty solid. So we don't really have any points to give. Two guys are ready for visits, however. So we'll send Joel Hall and Gerald Meyer most likely both to this Texas State game. Yeah. And then that's really it for our recruiting that we can do this week. So we'll go ahead and advance through the bye onto the Louisiana Lafayette Raysian Cajun game in week 10. And then uh, as we get into that, we'll do our recruiting and then we'll take a look at ESPN and see what it has for us. Nothing crazy happens on the recruiting front between weeks. And we come in here, no points really available for recruiting, but we'll check this out, make sure that there's nothing crazy, nobody that needs to come off of the board. Now, for the most part, it seems like we are doing pretty solid. However, there's a couple races that have tightened up for us. Nate Smith, the guard, uh, we're only in the lead by 10 points after Appalachian State has their visit last week. Um, and we also don't, haven't offered him a scholarship, so we're gonna max him out at the 500 left with 100 points to work with, but the problem is he's not alone. Um, there was another race, uh, again, with Appalachian State, only 240 points in the clear there with uh, the quarterback David Williams, but we're going to go ahead and so let's first schedule this last visit that we have, this one visit that we have with Bo Wilcox, another perfect complimentary visit at the Texas State game, and then we're going to go through the uh, offer some scholarships to guys that we don't already have them with. Nate Smith will be the first, and let's go up to John Gonzalez, and we will offer him a scholarship as well. We're looking okay in the uh, scouting department, pretty decent, 62 overall corner for us, gaining on ULM. They have their visit before us, but then we go the week after, so as long as they don't have some ridiculous visit where he commits because of it, we should still be uh, in the mix there. And that'll do it for our recruiting. So now we can see if anything crazy happened last week and if there's a chance for something to happen this week. Uh, we see Oklahoma State lost to Iowa State. So number three falls and the amount of number uh, or the amount of undefeated schools left is slowly dwindling. Anybody else taking a loss last week? Uh, Michigan, Iowa and Minnesota, it looks like. They drop out. I got to imagine with Michigan and Iowa, it was because of a lost Minnesota. It could have just been because somebody new to the polls jumped them. Uh, I didn't look as we scrolled through, though, to see who's playing who. Georgia and Florida, 13 versus 8 will play. Otherwise, it's not too crazy. Oklahoma plays just Ohio. Clemson plays, what is that, Virginia. North Carolina plays NC State. So, uh, you know, nothing crazy for, for these top teams. And, uh, wow, Cincinnati came out. Uh, with a close win against Illinois, 13-10, Bearcats still undefeated. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Uh-oh. Herb Street is saying the Ragin' Cajuns will win this one. They are a better overall team than us. Uh, we only beat them in total defense and rush defense in terms of stats. They are, they are pretty solid. Top 50 everywhere across the board. Um, the game says that we beat them in turnover differential, but it, it doesn't know how to handle negative numbers. Both of us are 5-1. Their loss is to a 5-3 Arkansas, uh, much like ours was to an SEC team. Who have they beat, though? You know, an FCS team where they destroyed. They destroyed a bad Akron. Um, beat a beat a okay Texas State, a winning record Texas State. Beat 
Georgia Southern by five. That's a pretty close game and a close game against a one in five Arkansas State. So they seem to be all over the board on their performance. Definitely not a team that we're going to be able to sleep on. We're going to be in the uh, black helmet, black jersey and teal pants for this one. And I'm not sure, but I don't think that these jerseys have been updated yet. We're going to go with their alternate one where they were in the, the black helmet and the black pants with the red or vermilion jerseys. And uh, we'll see how we get on in this match. Eight, 81 overall for uh, the Raging Cajuns with an 81 offense and an 83 defense. So they have the edge in, in every category there. Again, as we look at these rankings... Uh, what's our highest? Our highest offensive ranking is 48th. They have multiple in the top 20. Um, and on defense, we actually are, are pretty solid on defense. But unfortunately for us, so are they. Their top players, mid-80s overall, which is kind of what we've come to expect uh, out of the teams that we're playing here in the Sun Belt. And they've got a right outside linebacker out for the season and the running back potentially out kind of hoping that he sits because every fewer player that we have to worry about is always going to be useful for us. All righty, let's get into another one here at home on the teal turf. It's been a while, I feel like, since we've had a home game. Um, we'll go ahead and see. They're going to go heads. The coin falls tails, so we'll elect to kick this one off. Once again, Biscardi has this game underway. And that's going to be deep enough into the end zone. We won't see a return. So a touchback will bring it. Louisiana Lafayette out to the 25. All righty. Let's see what this is. I'm expecting a run on first down that goes for at least seven yards out of the Raging Cajuns. Instead, they're going to go with the slip screen. We were over there with uh, Gunter. Almost had the pick <laughs> right on top of him. But we'll force the loss of four on that one. I just don't understand why, why they're running the screenplay so often. With the uh, CPU as that's a decent 10 yard little slant to Peter LeBlanc. And we'll have a chance to get these guys off the field with a third and four. It's going to be a uh, pass quarterback scrambling. We're there with Gallagher. Man, my bad user turned into good user as we get the sack and force the fourth down. So Diggs will be back ready to return this punt after a great three and out from the defense. And if we get the blocking, we might get a little return. Fielding it just inside the 30. Oh, bad, uh, bad angle taken from me. We only get eight yards on the return. Let's see what we can do running this one up the middle with Marable. Uh, blocking actually seemed pretty solid, although we only get three yards out of the play. Risky play, but with no, you know, no too deep. One safety on the play. We're going to go to the air, and I'm throwing this one up for Denmark. Never mind. It was going to be a 50-50 ball either way, but McCall gets sacked, so it's third and a mile for us. Trusted the pocket a little bit too much on that one, so we're going to have to throw it up on third and long, and that was just a very inaccurate throw. Uh, we're giving the ball straight back to the Raging Cajuns here. I don't think that we're going to be able to sneak this one past the return man, but they're, man, they brought all the pressure that they could, so we'll get the fair catch, and uh, we'll give them the ball back at the 30. So after one drive apiece, we each have to punt it away, and they've actually come out ahead uh, five yards further than they've started on the first one. They go with a screen out to the edge, and what a massive play out on the sideline. The defensive back gets it done, just says no to his block, fights through, and gets the tackle. Befitting to his name, I believe that was strong doing it. As uh, third or second and eleven, they're gonna go to the ground, and that that oh my oh my gosh, what's happening there? Raging Cajuns with a beautiful block downfield. I'm <laughs> gonna go into the end zone. Elijah Mitchell, a 71-yard touchdown run. That play disintegrated in front of my eyes. And how about this? Number four, Nebraska falls to Northwestern. 8-1 now for the Huskers, one fewer undefeated team. Maybe Diggs can answer right back for us. That one happened all too quickly. Uh, we're going to return this one from a yard inside the end zone. Oh, no blocking, and we're stuck now inside the 20. Well, I guess field position doesn't matter if you're just going to score on one play anyways. Marable uh, does his best to emulate that, but only gets six yards. Really hoping that McCall can get some throwing off, although, man, they brought a lot of pressure running for his life. We aren't going to be able to pick up a block, but we can pick up the first down. 
It would be a real shame if we got put into a hole in the score early in this one as Marable gets two yards and forces a second down. But the last thing that I want to do is, you know, fall down by more than one score. Marable on this handoff, maybe I should have just kept it straight up the middle, but gets four, forces a manageable third down. And although it hasn't worked all that well so far in us, we will go to the air on this third down. Man, oh, there it is. Latushko holds on to it, takes a step out of bounds just across midfield. Could potentially be running into a bad one here. Isaiah likely in motion, hopefully picking up that clutch block for Marable, who's getting chased down from behind. And he's lucky to get two yards, I think. I am surprised that we were able to get anything as we... Go play action here. The play action worked beautifully, although, oh, that's stupid to throw. Latushko comes down with it, though. I thought he was going to be in double coverage, but he broke on the route as McCall took a big shot. Was able to get there and hold on to it through the contact. The play action actually worked beautifully, pulling a defender off. They're bringing pressure on this. Let's, uh, let's look for the end zone. Not necessarily the play that we want, uh, but I want to see. Maybe we can find Javon Hiley in the end zone. We're throwing it up for him. In the back corner, can't hold on to it through the contact tape, hey, but that was not a bad throw. We had the 50-50, and so far this season, we've been doing a really good job on those types of throws, so I figured it was worth a shot on uh, first down. Second down doesn't go so well for us either. Can we manage to pick this one up on third down? One-on-one -on -one in the corner of the end zone. Javon, oh no! Great read from the DB, and we throw the pick inside the red zone and up one score now the raging cajuns get a chance to extend their lead massive stop needed from the defense here now this is going to be a handoff and as always i'm just missing the man in the backfield thankfully mitchell only gets three on that one though they're going to try to go with the hurry up that's going to mark the end of the first quarter not a high scoring one but unfortunately we find ourselves at a deficit and how about oh man how, how about the the big run from louisiana to get into the end zone there and the pick to prevent us tying it up i just saw it scroll through in the ticker down below but number eight florida or i think it was yeah number eight florida just beat number 13 georgia i think those were the ranks whoever it is that was the number eight team is the one that got the win as we've got a big third down i'm bringing a blitz here let's audible into some pressure and see they're gonna put it on the ground can we get there matt's broken tackles going to allow the first down bush can't knock him down either and gunter has to come around uh, they pick up 11 yards first we were absolutely prepared for the play we just couldn't do anything about it and this time gunter seems to be the only sure tackler on the squad as he pulls him down for a loss of four all right, big second down. Can we hold them? They're going to go to the air. A little play action over the middle to Fleming. He gets seven yards, and we've got the third down. We could force a punt here. Last time out on third down, we were very unsuccessful. They're going to go to the air. Out to the edge. Kelly with the easy tackle on Johnny Lumpkin. What a great name. It's going to be fourth and eight. Levi Lewis is five of five through the air. Hoping for a return of ball ball here on this punt. Not the longest one. We're going to be fielding it just inside the 20. And Diggs gets us across the 35. So the offense can come out. We're going to go play action to start this one. And, oh, I'm going to run for my life. Maybe over the middle. Latushko holds on to that through the contact. And that's why I threw that 50-50 ball in the end zone earlier. was because we seem to come down with these. We're a third of the way through this second quarter here. And uh, I'm really hoping we can score quick. Unfortunately for us, the running game hasn't been too good. Both teams still under 100 yards of total offense. Marable breaks a tackle, but only gets two yards out of the deal, so it's third and long again. We're going to have to go to the air. So far, our passing game has been far from perfect in the day. I didn't mean to throw that one, and we just threw another pick. I hit the wrong button again. And just like that, it's two turnovers on the day. Oh, what am I doing? I'm so used to using an Xbox controller that when I see X, I just get confused about what button I'm supposed to press and does not work out that time as uh, I see 27 yards on the carry. That That is far from acceptable. All right, we're going to be in danger. We can't continue to, to expect our defense to hold these guys out of the end zone. So it's uh, only a matter of time before they beat us. Man, Elijah Mitchell getting it done today. We're gonna bring a big blitz on this one. Corner blitz doesn't actually work though. It's <laughs> again, Elijah Mitchell getting the carry and another first down. 
This guy's his quarterback is now seven to seven through the air as this one's probably gonna go on the ground. It is a handoff and it's another six yard carry. With this drive going the way it is and with there only being two and a half minutes left before halftime, we're certainly in danger of uh, falling to maybe a, a difficult lead to claw back from third inches to here. On third down, they hand it off. Gallagher got slaughtered at the line. It's all too easy of a first down and they just will not stop. Got to imagine the fans aren't happy with the performance so far. We're bringing a blitz on this first down. It is a handoff and it's oh, another eight yards, man. Unless we get the stop, this is going to be truly a morale crushing drive. We do manage to pull down the backup, Trey Ragus. And on third and one, we'll bring the blitz. Oh, that's a mistake. They go with the, uh, the fake snap count and it's a false start. So third and six for these guys. Only 50% on third downs for uh, for this team right now. They are in field goal range, so I'm expecting them to get points no matter what. Quarterback scrambling. He should have been sacked there. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage after all that. So a field goal attempt on the cards here as... Actually, we need to take a timeout. What am I doing? The clock ticking down. We only have a minute left. We have a chance to get some points here. Can't believe I wasted that much time. But they're going to try to get this kick off and we'll see if there's some sort of miracle that we can block it or see how our slider changes do is, hey, maybe for the first time this season, we've seen the CPU hit a field goal. It's uh, kind of a shame, though, because now we're down 10 nothing. Hoping that Diggs can take this one to the house because obviously the defense is, is having a hard time stopping these guys and the offense can't seem to score at all. Although, what am I doing? I just ran straight into the defender. They should be playing to uh, prevent deep plays. We're going to be looking for one of those. Here it is. 50-50 ball for Denmark. Can he go up and get it? Sam, no, it's another pick with 52 seconds on the clock. Oh, this is disastrous. Not only are we not going to score any points in the half, but there's a risk that they go up three scores on us to the air. Quarterback's going to scramble. Can somebody move to get him? Trying to strip the ball here. We force the fumble and Gunter's going to recover it. We're in field goal range just like that. What an incredible turn of events. As now we're going to run the exact same four verts that we threw the pick on the first time because I don't learn from my mistakes and <laughs> it is worth throwing. It was picked it right back off. Grayson McCall is three of nine in the air. Clearly the four verts isn't working in this game. We're going to go away from it. Just a little bit, see if we can uh, make something out of this drive and Javon Hiley. Nice job, 14 yards, got us a first down, got out of bounds. Oh, maybe he didn't get out of bounds? I don't know why, but the clock is running right now. We're gonna run a play action there, bringing pressure. I just gotta get rid of it and uh, accidentally moved likely out of the way, but at least it stops the clock. 27 seconds in the half, right over the middle. Isaiah likely completely unguarded the tight end seam. It's too easy. And we're going to make this a three-point game. 23 seconds before the half, and somehow through all of that, we're only down a field goal. Uh, so many interceptions, but one costly turnover for Louisiana means that we're looking real good. They're going to go ahead and let the clock run out and go into the locker room with their lead intact. But we get the ball to start the third quarter, and I got to feel relatively confident as the... <laughs> Extras on the stadium looking a little bit wonky there. All right, digs back to return to start the third quarter. Oh, it is a returnable ball, fielding it at the one yard line. I haven't been great moving him around today. I'm, I'm still not great as we're inside the 25. The running game in the first half was not very good. Let's see if this half it can feel a little bit better. Marable getting a nice five on his first carry this time out. Maybe needing to start relying. Oh, wait a second. Look at the pressure that it looks like they want to bring. Let's uh, let's go for a little audible four verts here. See if somebody can go get open and hope that we don't throw another pick. Uh, Latushko. <laughs> okay, uh, I got to be cut off at some point here. Continuing to throw that pass would be the definition of insanity. So we'll go away from it. Oh, we had Sam Denmark wide open for the first down, but we couldn't find him. And now because of my idiocy, we have to punt this one away. Let's see. Can we do a little, a little trickeration and sneak this one past the return man? I don't think it went far enough to the side. No, it will. Oh, beautiful punt. 
Downed. No, we're gonna let it. What? No, 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 don't pick it up. What is he picking it up for? It was gliding along the field ever so close to the goal line. But we still get them inside the 20 off that punt, and we can see if maybe the defense has it in them to get us back into this game. They have one field goal, or one, sorry, one turnover, one forced fumble that put us into scoring range. Maybe they can just happen to find another one. As, there we go. Nice, uh, nice stop on the run, forcing the third down. It's a big third down. I'm going to bring the safeties in. We're going to press. They will go to the air. Running back open, but the quarterback has no time to get the throw off. Levi Lewis sacked for a loss of seven, I think that was, and they're going to have to punt the ball right back to us. So just like how the game started, it's a battle of punts to begin this second half. And, you know, if you remember how that, that first half opened, after they returned their first punt, they scored a touchdown. Could it be that we don't even have to see the offense get on the field? A 31-yard punt return for Aaron Diggs sets us up in field goal range. Question is, can we avoid making some stupid turnover mistakes? And can we get into the end zone, or will we be forced to kick a field goal attempt? Try to get Grayson involved in the running game a little bit more with the read option. Spin move doesn't work. We've got a third and six. This could work a lot better for us. Uh, as I'm going to go for the post, Sam Denmark can't hold on through the contact. I thought that man was a little bit further off. Oh, my passing is so bad today. We have the field goal attempt here, though. And knock it through. Tie ball game at the very least, but I really thought that was a touchdown. Now that their lead is gone, let's see if they're, they're forced into making some mistakes. So they play maybe a little bit more dangerous. Going with the screen, I was late to react to it. But they are able to pick up the first down. Expecting them to go to the ground more than they are. This one's going to the air and we're right there for it, but he holds on to it. This quarterback still has yet to see an incompletion on the day. And we're there! Oh, we should have had the pick six. Silas Kelly couldn't hold on to it. Thankfully, we managed to hit him with the jinx. And uh, now he's, I think, 9 of 10 through the air, going to the air one more time. Plenty of time in the pocket, but yeah, he's scrambling forward and couldn't find the escape, so it's a sack. And it's going to be fourth down for the Raging Cajuns. Definitely not how they wanted this drive to go, as we will have the opportunity to take our first lead of the game if this drive goes according to plan. Hoping for a good punt return because special team seems to bail us out. Diggs getting towards the edge, cutting it back inside. Oh, he stayed on his feet for a little bit before taking a massive shot. Got us near midfield, though. This is going to be good. Don't be mad at me. We're looking deep on the play action. Rolling outside the pocket. Denmark is wide open. I've got to throw it to him. I wanted Javon highly, but we just... I knew that I wouldn't be able to make that throw. Instead, we could get inside the red zone anyways. Had we gone to our circle, Javon Haile, uh, that would have been uh, a touchdown. He had a couple steps on his man, but I had to make a throw that I knew would be completed. Question now is, can we find the end zone? Because we have struggled so far in this game. I meant to hand that off to Maribel. I was holding the right button, it just didn't do it, and it's third 11 now. We have struggled all game long, and now it's going to continue as I'm going to get hit as we're throwing. We're going to be forced to kick the field goal. We just have not been solid in, in maintaining the pocket today, so it's really hurting us. Number 10 Oklahoma State in a battle there with an unranked Texas Tech. And we might now have a three-point lead, but I do not feel safe with it. It definitely feels like one of those games where uh, they could just come up with a big touchdown late. My biggest goal, though, is not to have any more turnovers uh, unforced, you know, unforced errors, I should say. It's a broken tackle, but we forced the third and nine. They're going to be going to the air. Maybe we can get an interception of our own. Uh, we know they're going to go to the air. It's a screen. I can't get there in time. Gunter needs to get this tackle. Diving gets it. Oh, broken tackle there. And he's got a lot of... I was going to say green in front of him. Uh, but it would be teal. As we come to the end of the third quarter. Three-point lead. Uh, but we got the stop that we needed. A touchdown could do enough here uh, in the fourth quarter to end this game. Give us a ten-point cushion. However... If we only get a field goal or worse, 
This could be real bad. Diggs, not a great return. I haven't felt confident throwing all game long. I don't know where I would be able to find any of that confidence, but we also haven't had any success on the ground. Arable has 12 carries, but only 35 yards on the day. Although, this could be a decent one. Ah, another six. Gets him over 40 at least. But it's just been tough to pick up the yards. We've seen a lot of two-yard carries on the day as our blockers just aren't getting to their spots. Second and 10, we're going to get risky here. I typically believe in this game the draw is not a good play. However, nothing else seems to be working in that. You know, it got us four yards. It's better than a lot of our other runs. We are one of seven on third downs in this game. This is a stupid idea. We're going to go with the, <laughs> the jet sweep. Latushko has to cut it north. Uh, I would have been better off running the slip screen there. I am struggling so much on the day. At least we should see a decent punt. No. It's going to bounce off of him. We recovered the ball, they say. The muffed punt into field goal range. Just like that, we have the ball back. And we're at the 26-yard line with 3.56 left on the clock. What a miracle. And how much have those fumbles changed the course of this game? It is very likely that we would be losing this by a decent margin if they weren't letting go of the football so much. As, gosh, I almost gave it right back to him. Only 6 of 18 through the air. This is... I don't... <laughs> I don't feel confident at all. One of eight on third downs now. Third and six is what we've got to deal with. And I got to get rid of it. It's out of bounds. I accidentally went in the hurry up and, and had to call a play. I want to kick the field goal. So what we're going to do here is just fake the snap count and see if we can force him to jump offside. And, you know, we were going to take a delay a game. So an offside doesn't hurt us anymore. Now we can kick the field goal. This is a massive field goal kick. I tried to miss it. Thankfully, the kicker said no, and it's a six-point game with 322. A touchdown wins it for the Raging Cajuns. I have absolutely just struggled on offense all game long, as that's a wide-open man. We need a good tackle here. No, I got picked up on the block there across the 40. Oh, this is dangerous. We're in crunch time now, as they're going to go with the slip screen. Can we get there? We're there with Gunter to knock him down again, but we need I need to get interceptions off of those. Second and long as the clock ticks below three minutes. Time is of the essence for the Raging Cajuns. They're going to hand it off on a draw. Second and 15 turns into third and 13, and they will have to go to the air here. On this third down, I'm absolutely expecting them to run another screen. Look at that. Oh, it's disappointing. You hate to, what did I do? I missed. Oh, thank goodness for Gunter. How did I miss that tackle? It's fourth and five. I imagine they go for it. And you know that I'm just having a bad day playing the game when I call the play that they're going to do perfectly and then I can't do anything to stop it. Quarterback scrambling here. Nowhere to go. Turnover on downs with two minutes to go in the game. Are we going to hold on for another close one? I expect them to be taking their timeouts and I think a first down would do it. A field goal would for sure do it. Marable getting one of his best runs of the day with five yards there. And second down, we'll hand it off. There's a lot of space. Marable gets the first down. Second timeout taken. Will they be able to get the stop in time to get the ball back? Marable losing a yard there as the final timeout is taken for the Raging Cajuns. We'll bring Likely in motion. And get hit again at the line of scrimmage. Third and nine. Fortunately for us, the clock is ticking. Unfortunately, we are one of nine on third downs Let's see what we can do only rushing four i maybe you see it denmark comes down with it into the end zone game set match sam denmark i did not expect him to get to that one on only our second third down conversion of the day finds the ball finds the end zone and with a minute and 16 i think it's all over we will look to the air here to see if we can pick this up and make it a 14 point lead and oh you gotta call that pass interference got knocked over jammed at the line of scrimmage and just couldn't get his hands up in time so in a game where i threw three interceptions it looks like we're set to win it up 12 with a minute and 14 left quarterbacks going to the air 
Uh, not sure how, how he's able to hold on and move forward for eight yards there. They will spike the ball with a minute to go. They have to score two touchdowns to win this game. And stuff like that's not going to help, although the broken tackle will stop the clock. It will allow them to get up to the ball and uh, maybe run another play. I got to remind you, 15 of 16 through the air for this quarterback. I don't agree with putting a man in motion when time is of the essence. Uh, I've left the running back wide open. They're going to go deep in a dropped pick from Silas Kelly, his second dropped interception of the day. Just doesn't seem like they're going to be able to do enough late in this one. As that's a wide open out route, Rodgers gets across the 40. They do technically still have a chance to win this. A quick touchdown and a... Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> a quick touchdown and an onside kick could put him in position. But throwing a ball away off the snap is one of those things that typically doesn't really help you. Second and 10. They go to the air. Open man. First down stops the clock. That was awfully close to not being a first down. I just got to think, even if they recover the onside kick, are they going to leave themselves enough time to get anything done? Spiking the ball with 26 seconds to play. Just really stretching this game out as much as they can. As, oh, they I think they had a guy over the middle tackle missed. First down inside the red zone. I suspect tackling is being put on form right now as Rodgers gets the first and goal with 14 seconds to go. Oh, don't do this to me. They're going to spike the ball on this one. I imagine. Maybe the, they run a play here. Uh, how, why are you going to take so much time off the clock to spike the ball? Nine seconds now. We're bringing the house on this one. Second and goal, nine seconds. If they run it and we stop them, it's pretty much game over. They're going to go to the air, though. Man, open in the end zone. Oh, no. It's going to be a five-point game. Six seconds is more than enough time to recover the onside kick and throw a Hail Mary. That one was not very good, though. Pinson recovers it. Can I just run out the clock here? Three, two, one. Triple zeros on the clock. Oh, we survived. Wow. At the end, the final in this new ESPN Classic game, 22 to 17. I really thought we were going to lose this early on. Then when we took the lead, I thought it was over. And then they started just driving the ball and I kept making small little mistakes and they were executing. And if they just had a little bit more time, I, I would have been a very, very worried. So at the end of it, we come back to survive at home. I don't know if we deserve to win this game. Lost the turnover battle. Uh, we couldn't rush at all in this game. We couldn't convert third downs. Uh, we were just you know, fortunate to have the, the strip on the quarterback that we recovered in scoring position and the muffed punt as well. Our kicker is our offensive player of the game. Three of three on his field goals with a long of 44. Got the extra point. And uh, Teddy Gallagher, defensive player of the game. Two tackles for loss, two sacks, and a forced fumble. So we move to 6-1, and 4-1 and one in conference, and we can advance the week here. We get to go on the road to South Alabama. Uh, I'm curious to see what happened uh, in the top 25. We know that a couple of top teams lost. Number 4, Nebraska. Number 13, Georgia. Did anybody else in the top 10 fall? Is there a chance maybe Appalachian State could be ranked? Uh, recruiting, more guys ready to visit. Hey, a not good 50 overall. Uh, defensive tackle, Kelvin McCoy commits to the team. Obviously get a lot of XP. We're not ranked. The top 25, the Huskers fall to number 11. It's number five, uh-oh. The Bearcats lost. They lose a close one, five point game to a now number 19, Memphis. They drop only five spots to number 10 uh, as Nebraska drops to number 11. So four and five took losses. Number 13 took a loss, as did 14, 11 Oregon, RIP Ducks, uh, and number 17, Indiana. Potentially also USC, San Diego State, Iowa State, and UCF. Not a whole lot of extra teams receiving votes. That are outside and i'm curious let's go take a look at our conference standings before we call this one good 
see where we're where we're looking um we're still top undefeated in conference so appalachian state just lost this is the one that i was curious about because i thought that they were undefeated for a while in conference there um as they lost to georgia southern a couple of weeks ago before beating texas state this week all righty that's gonna do it for us six game winning streak for us we gotta lose at some point i didn't necessarily see anything crazy uh in the sliders that would need to be adjusted but if you did if, if you notice maybe maybe i'm doing something too easy feel free to leave a comment uh explaining why and, and we'll take a look at it and potentially change things i'm always down to make things a little bit more challenging if you enjoyed this video please feel free to leave it a like and if you want to see some more content remember it is free for you to subscribe you can always unsubscribe later if you stop enjoying the content, even though, let's be real, that's not going to happen. And if you want to go cross-platform, you could follow us on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. Link is in the description down below. Regardless, thanks again for watching. Uh, I, you know, I say it every episode, but it, it never is a lie. It means a lot that you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, I, it seems as much as I'm enjoying making it. But regardless, thanks again for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night, or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.